say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. Outdoor kitchen. Outdoor kitchen for now. This may change very shortly because we won't melt if it rains, but the cameras will. So we may get started out here. We may have to move all operations inside. Wait a minute, I melt, I'm pure sugar. That's true. So I'm gonna have to go in. That. So today, we're gonna smoke something. We haven't smoked anything in a long time. It's about time. Yeah. Doesn't matter what kind of smoker you have, what you need to attain perfection in the smoking world is temperature, temperature, temperature okay. and time that's it and smoke obviously so if you've got something that produces smoke temperature and you got the time you can smoke it's very easy we're gonna do some ribs now we've done ribs so many ways I'm trying to think we've done them in a crock pot it looks like a little two mm -hmm. three four hour deal right. we've done the three two one ribs this is my go-to ribs when you got folks coming over and you just got to get them going, you know they're going to be here in five or six hours. Yeah. You want to get them rolling. This is my recipe for that. First of all, we're going to take that membrane off. So we've already pulled it off this one. And I just kind of slide a knife under here. And usually if you get a paper towel, it makes it easier. Pull this whole she is the off. queen of the membrane removal. Is that what you call me? Yep. I should pull off. There's one more little piece. Yeah. Paper towel kind of grabs it. Yeah, because it's pretty slippery. Makes it easy. There we and go. boom, you are We're ready done. to roll. Now, do you remember me telling our wonderful viewing audience that anything you can do outdoors, you might do just as well indoors? Yeah. We might be proving that tonight. So anyway, I'm gonna get my favorite dryer up, whatever yours is, and I'm gonna really put this on there liberally. I really want that taste to get in. Now, pretty quickly, that's gonna soak in. And I'm gonna let these set for 15, 20 minutes. And it really lets it sink in. So you see how much I'm putting on there. Lots. And that's gonna set for 15, 20 minutes. Then we're gonna throw that on at 225. Now let's talk about this, 225, that's low and slow. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let those go for at least three hours. Now this is a very, very typical recipe. And from there, we'll show you a few secrets, but it's pretty cut and dry. Like these are dry. just These are just basic ribs. And we're gonna show you that you can do this show inside on a back porch, covered back porch, just as easily as you could inside. I'm so sad. Look, yeah. we had the fire going. Rain. Everything's ready. It is raining. Those sheep are happy. Yeah, they are. Well, let's take this operation inside. Planned on doing everything outside today. Of course, it rained and it's still raining a little bit, but we brought the smoker on the back porch. Three hours at 225. These are the most basic ribs recipe that I could possibly come up with. So let's see what it looks like after three hours at 225 degrees. Not too shabby, huh? Now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna pull these off, go directly to the foil. And those are some big thick ribs. Then we're gonna brush on, put a lot of our favorite barbecue sauce on here. Now something that I saw somebody do years ago before it was cool to do. This just gives it a nice creamy, salty taste. Just a couple pieces of butter here and there. Turn those back over. Just a little bit more. Plenty of barbecue sauce on here. And then again, across the top, butter, 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 butter. Farmer, if you'll wrap that up for me. Now 
And again, these are probably the most basic recipe I can come up with. And you're letting your smoker do the work, you set the temperature, walk away. You got other things going on, you gotta work on the farm. Just crank that over. Now you want your internal temperature to be about 160. So we're gonna seal it up, let it go for another hour. And then I'm probably gonna check them at that point. I'm gonna to check to see what the internal temperature is too. If we're getting around 160, I may take that out, put a little more barbecue sauce on it, seal it back up for just a little while, let that glaze over, bring that out, and we got something good. What do you have to have with ribs when you're at our house? You gotta have beans. Baked beans. That's right. Now, what happens if they're on the smoker? They're smoked baked beans. And, and they're better. really, really, really good. That's right. So what do you do? So we got about four and a half, five cups of beans. Mm -hmm. We wanna make this process much simpler. So if you just started your baked beans from scratch, it'd take about 45 minutes in a 350 degree oven. We could do that, and we're thinking about doing that on the Dutch oven outside. Mm -hmm. But again, here comes the rain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it like this. We're gonna take three big old pieces of bacon, big old honking pieces of bacon. So we're gonna reserve our bacon fat at the bottom and our bacon as well for the recipe. We we'll cook our bacon and cook it slow. Even if I'm starving? Are you starving? Yes. Let's see you're starving. Like I don't like That's pretty scary. <laughs> so we're gonna render our fat out of here. Then we're gonna take some onion. I'll tell you what, Ms. Farm, if you wanna go ahead and chop that up. Go ahead and get our onion chopped. I like green and red peppers in my beans. You don't have to put them at all if you don't like them. But I like sweet peppers, I like that taste. I like to saute them with my onions in the bacon grease. Do you mind if I use my chopper? No. I love my chopper. Just don't get them too tiny. Okay, a little pepper. About this much pepper? Yeah, maybe a little bit more than that. You gotta have some pepper. And some red? And some red. How much, Bob? Oh, that smells so good. Good enough? That does smell good. It does smell delicious. What do you think? You know, that looks about Perfect. right. Looks about right. Oh, the onions are getting you, aren't they? I'm just crying because I'm happy. Everything we're doing here is to expedite because you're starving. I am starving. We can't have you starving. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a hot pan. Mm -hmm. We've already cooked the beans a little bit so they don't have that far to go. We're going to saute the onions and the peppers together. Then we take our beans, put them back in here. Remember, already hot pan. Just get those nice and warm. We're going to add our ingredients. Now, to me, when it comes to baked beans, you gotta have brown sugar, you gotta have a little Worcestershire sauce, and you gotta have, to me, just a little ground mustard seed. I love that in there. It gives it a base that's, it's hard to explain, but it gives it that taste. And we did a shoot with a guy not too long ago. He called it Sagram. Sagram? Sagram. Did you ever go to a Sagram festival? Not too. Back in me. the day? When you took me. So I'm old enough to remember as a kid, these guys making sorghum mm -hmm. with their old broke mule walking around and they would feed that cane into there. Do you know, speaking of how old I am, do you know that this show has been on the air for 10 years? That's a long time. In celebration, woo, look at the balloons and all the happy stuff. 10 years. Wow. We thank you so much for being with us for 10 years and we're gonna take a look back every now and then celebrate. Speaking of, Sargum or sagram, as this old timer calls it. Let's see what it takes to make some beautiful, wonderful, old fashioned sargum. Casey County, Gregory yes. Lawhorn. That's correct. Yes. With, a, with a handful of cane right over here. Let's talk about what's going on here today. Now you're making molasses. 
or sorghum. 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 What's the sorghum. difference between molasses and sorghum? Well, now I've read so many stories about it, I don't know what to tell you the truth about it. Molasses, that I've been told, is a darker black strap type thing. Right. And sorghum is a sweeter, lighter color. Right. So that's about all I can tell you the difference in it. But around here, everything's sorghum. Yeah. But now, we call it molasses. All this starts with cane. Cane. When it's growing, it looks a lot like corn. You just, the seeds are very, very small. And you plant it like you do corn. When you see it growing before the head comes on, you'd think it's corn. Yeah. I mean, and then after it gets about 120 days old, it's mature. You can go in the field and strip the leaves off, or you can cut it and bring it to the mill or your press and strip it there. It'll hold itself in shape if you'll strip it standing and yeah. break the head out. I would imagine, now, the history of sorghum, molasses goes way, way, way back. Way back. All right, now, there were times, I would say, when they were settling in this part of the country, they're on the move a lot, and they could, you could pack one of these machines with you. And this this one you say is dated to 18... 18 and 86. You know, I can imagine when they were settling in this country, you know, they probably had them a jar, whatever kind of container they had of this. The whole process was going on probably in the late 1700s, I would imagine even, early probably, 1800s. Probably, I'd say when we settled this country. The cane was always here. Now, of course, they've refined it and got oh, it down to a certain... Many, what, many. what kind of cane is this right here? This is the... The name is Dale, D-E-L-L, -L, but there's many, many names, right. uh, brands, you know, brand names. And if you chew on it, can you get a sweet you, taste you out can, of it? You can chew that, but if you're not careful, it'll make your mouth sore. No kidding. Yep. So it's pretty tough. Yeah, but it all it's sweet. I don't know what it does. It kind of breaks your mouth out a little. So here you are. You got your cane. You got the leaves stripped off. You take it over here, and you got your old broke mule over here. What's his name? Jack. Jack. Yeah, about 12 years old. Yeah. Good old broke meal. So basically, you feed the cane. You push into it in the there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to actually physically, no. it doesn't, it well, doesn't draw it. Well, you just start it. Gotcha. You, and then it pulls it through. And the juices flow it just out. Runs out in a pan, bucket, whatever. And you need to strain it three or four or five times. Gotcha. And then put it in the pan and then cook it until it gets 227 degrees. That's the part that, that kind of fascinated me. Not 223 and not, mm -hmm. not 234. No. Mm -hmm. What is it? 27. 27. 227. What happens if it's not hot enough or too hot? It'll be thin. Huh. See, some people like it kind of thick and some like it a little thin. Yeah. But the really right consistency is, is uh, 227 degrees. 220. That's specific. Mm hmm. All right. Once you pour that off, take it over there and cook it up. I saw a guy over there just stirring it all up. I guess you're very carefully looking at the temperature there and seeing what goes on, what happens at that point when it gets that magic 227? You, you pull it off of the fire immediately. Yeah. Say the pan's got four handles. Right. You just get four people and get it off there quick. Now, will you, on a day like this, will everything go into one batch or will you cook more than one batch? No, it'll just be one. Gotcha. Because it takes approximately six hours to cook it. Oh, wow. So to get two in one day, you'd have to start early in the morning. Gotcha. Of course, we started at 4.30 this morning. Oh, wow. Me and my granddaughter. So you got your broke mule, you got you some friends who are willing to help you out. Oh, yeah. I bet you, I bet you don't have too tough a time getting folks up there. You say in the evenings, a bunch of kids come oh, in. Oh, yeah, like yeah. To, they like to, this they whole process. This thing. Do you think people have some kind of sense inside, whether they know it or not, they want to know how things were done back in but the old days? I believe everybody has a longing to learn where our ancestors and our heritage right. has come from. A lot of these younger children, they may act like and you know they're not really interested, but when they're around something like this, you can see them, their eyes a light and they want to ask questions about why does this do this, this, this. So yeah, I think we need to preserve our heritage. Yeah. And we that's might have to I go back this. to that someday. Well, you know, if you can do it, you could survive if oh, things yeah. got to a certain point. In my lifetime, when I used to go visit my great grandmother, no electricity. You know, we've, I've seen that happen. Now, most people had it when I was a kid. But you, as a kid, we're not too much different in age. You didn't have electricity till you were how old? 13. Wow. So I've carried a coal oil lamp through the house many, many times, carry the water from a spring. Of a winter, when it'd be real bad winters, you had to bring your milk and water to the living room where you had a fire, or it'd be froze up the next morning. 
And you know, we all had tasks and we all had chores. It was important for us to get that done. There wasn't any, there wasn't any, I don't think I want to. Oh, never mind. Oh. <laughs> you say that like I said it. <laughs> you would, the dad would not put up with that. No. But okay, so we come out here, we come out here to your farm. I didn't really know what to expect. Yeah. We start walking in here, I see this huge, beautiful oak tree. It's gotta be two, 300 years old. Two at least, yeah. And then we see this log cabin and we see the mules and the horses and all this stuff going on. And it's almost like, I remember visiting uh, Hodgenville where Abraham Lincoln was born, a little area like that. You have really created a, a, a feeling here of what it was like not that long ago. You know, you think 100 years ago, yeah. that's that's when you'd go down the road, that's kind of what you'd see. I tell 100... people we just moved back 100 years today. Yeah. And you know, I love that. I, I enjoy it and I want everybody to enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I do it for other people other than myself. Right. I want to share experience like this with people. But I remember what we used more was for cakes and cookies and, uh, Popcorn balls. Uh, that's, you got <laughs> that, that, to that, try that's a that wonderful now. thing. You've got to try that. I'm going to try it. Now let me ask you this: How long have you been doing this as as a as oh, this kind is of the fifth, the year. fifth, fifth year. year? What I'm a little well, I don't know how to say this and be nice about it. I don't like drinking and foul language. Uh, Did you see my signs? I saw your sign. Now I want to keep it to where everybody can come and not have to feel like they're going to be insulted. This is a beautiful thing, and when people see this, of course, it'll already be over. But is this going to happen? Is this going to be? Well, as far, as far as I know, we're going to continue each year. And at the end of the day, there's dinner. Huge dinner. A feast, I have heard. Oh, yeah. you see that big long table? And I heard horse rides going on out here. Yeah, yeah. They take them back out of the big point where you look over on Brush Creek. Beautiful scenery over there. You'll have to take a little ride after a while. Thank yeah. you. Thank All you right. for doing what you're doing and All keeping right. the Appreciate traditions alive. That's part of what this show does. Well, I, that's what we need. We need to get back to reality. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking right. time out for us today. Thank you. Uh -huh. Now look at that bacon. That's slow cooked bacon. We didn't get in any hurry. We're gonna come back. With those perfectly cut. With these beautifully cut right. peppers and onions. Right. That Nikki meticulously I did. chopped by, by hand. hand. Uh -huh. Now, when I dump this out in here, the smell is what? Amazing. A little slice yum, of heaven. That's one thing we can't share with you. I wish we could on television. The smells that come out of this kitchen. Oh me, oh my. Now I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. I had it real low on the bacon. So again, the whole thing that I'm trying to do here is expedite this process so you can eat sooner than later. Now my beans, I change them up every now and then, but one thing that stays the same is always the sorghum. Always the sorghum, always the brown sugar. But Worcestershire, you could put some ketchup or you could put some of your favorite barbecue sauce. And we do that quite often too. So we kind of change it up as we go along. Now, the smell of onions and peppers cooking, it reminds me of... The fair. The fair. The fair. Going to the you fair. You think about the folks making their making their different sausages oh, yeah. and, and then they're putting this kind of stuff on it. Do they cook it in bacon grease? I, I wonder. Know. I bet they do. What do you think? Looks good so to far, me. So far, so good? I could eat those now. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to dump our beans in here. All four or five cups of them. Right. Now, you see what we got going on here. You see our flavors here. But there's one thing that's going to be missing, and that is... Put it on the smoker. Smoke. smoke. You add some smoke roll into this on our ribs that are almost done. Are you kidding me? Look at Yummy. that. Just look that at looks that. good already. Now, I tell you what, if you will dump the sorghum out for me, oh, well. to me, to get that old-fashioned taste that I remember as a kid, anytime any of the church ladies made beans. Sorghum. Sorghum. And let's go with some brown sugar. You want all this? Yeah, let's go. That's about a half a cup. Let's go. Let's go more like a third. Because right. we do already have sorghum in it. But you got to have brown sugar. And Worcestershire sauce. Now, you couldn't I would, eat those now. That looks pretty good. You could. I mean, they're all cooked. Delish. The thing is, that extra little added smoke. That's right. Just for a half an hour that we're going to put out there. Just adds so much. A little ground mustard, 
and I don't know, that's probably, that's probably half a teaspoon. Then we're gonna put our bacon in there, Ms. Ryan. Just right on top? Hey, now. Mm -hmm. mm, you wanna stir mm -hmm. that up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You two Slate handed. on the top? Yep, you two-handed person, you. Hmm. Should we try each one to make sure? What do you think, is that okay? I don't know. Mm -mm. I think it should be all right. Hey, Kelly's stealing some. Kelly? <laughs> Kelly's in on the act. She saw us eating bacon and couldn't handle it. Everybody needs a taste, so she needs to make sure it's good too. Bacon. Yeah. There's something about bacon. So now we know that our beans have already cooked. We've added the seasoning. We've already sauteed the vegetables. If you notice, I'm doing a lot of this to expedite the cooking process. I don't like mm. sitting around waiting all day if I don't have to. So we attain the same end here, but we really did expedite things by sauteing those. Now let's Ready? take these out and put them open. I'm see if we can find a spot. We'll, we'll see if we can put them on the top shelf. Let that smoke roll over top of them. Yeah. We're ready to go. Yummy. Look at this. I like to use a bread knife. And look at that. Wow, look look that's how tender, delicious. look how moist. That is just exactly what you want. We're messing our plate up, but Miss Farmer. Take it the first I know bite. You're starving. Wow. Now look at that. That's exactly. Now look at this. You got your smoke pink color there. We were up to temperature. Everything's just like look at the glaze. It's just that's like so you want good. it. Isn't that good? That's it's delicious. moist. Hey, that was mine. Mm. Mm. Very good. Mm. I want you to look how moist that still is. The perfect pink coloring from the smoke. Our smoked beans. I'm gonna try some of those. Those look good too. Ready? I am. Oops, piece of bacon. It's not a big bite. There we go. Mm. Dig it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Those are really good. Mm. Mm. Bacon's good. Sargum and the peppers. Smoky too, I taste the smoke. You gotta have the smoke, mm. you gotta have the smoke. To me, that's about the perfect summertime dinner. Mm -hmm. You can make some coleslaw, whatever side you wanted. So we're gonna turn the lights out. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna eat like true human beings, being that this is our kitchen, this is not a set. And then we'll be back in just a little while. All right, we're gonna start off, and it's actually really simple. I got this all memorized. I am going to take a third of a cup of sugar. All right. Put this in the bowl, and that might sound weird to start. And I'm gonna do a whole packet of yeast. All right. And I need a one and a quarter cup of warm water. So what I think is unique about this is she has the sugar in there with the yeast. So we're gonna start mm -hmm. with that. Makes it work. Yes. Now I need half a teaspoon of salt. I know you have salt okay. over there. One dollar? One dollar, wow. That's expensive. I, I need the cash before you put it in there. All righty. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ooh. And now I have a third cup of oil. That's just vegetable oil. That's pretty much it for the wet. And in her recipe, she says use three cups of flour and then a little extra just to make sure it, it doughs up good. So I have about three and a half cups. Okay. So usually I just add a little bit in here, mix it as I go. All right, one thing nice about her, this recipe, is you can let it rise. After it rises, put it in the fridge and let it sit until you need it. So I like I, that. Yeah. So you got something to do. Right around the farm or you want to go shopping like yes, Nikki likes that's to right. do. And that way for me, if we're having people for dinner, I just make it in the morning and set it aside till we need it. Now how much do you need it? Just a little bit, just to get a ball, she said. So not a whole lot. And that's why I get a little extra flour. And if you think you need more flour, you can add it till you get it to where you want it. And I leave it a little bit sticky. And this looks pretty good. And usually I let it sit on the counter for a couple hours and mm -hmm. rise. And then after it's gotten to where I want it, I just put it in the fridge till we need it. We're gonna let I'm the- I'm digging it. I know it. That's so good. Something about when you're cooking yeast bread in the oven. Yeah, so it's good. really, really good. All right, now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and let it rise on the counter a couple hours. Then after that, we can throw it in the fridge, and then we can use it whenever we good want. Good to go. Yes. I like it. So 
we're gonna have everything come together at once. How long does it take your yeast rolls to cook? They only cook 15 minutes, but what I've done, I actually let this rise on the counter for probably two hours, and it's been in the fridge. So see how it is right now? And it's cool. It's so, doughy. It's doughy, but you can sit in the fridge, and I'm gonna do what you said your mom used to do. This is this is what she did. Yes. And I loved it, because you could split them in threes, and it makes the top grow out. Yeah. Oh, it's good. And we're gonna let these sit behind us and grow until okay. they look good and put, we're gonna actually put some butter on them too. So she's had to, now what temperature and for how long? We're again? gonna put these at 425 and it, sh I'm gonna give it 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna kind of watch them. It happens pretty quick. Yeah, to see when they're brown. And I'm gonna, like I said, put butter on them. Look at them. Breaks apart in three little pieces. See how perfect that is? That's why mom these did. Are, oh. oh, remember when we'd get sorghum mm. and butter and put on a roll like this? Those are so good. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> mm. I might have more. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.